listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's House of Cards After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's House of Cards After Show. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, After Buzzers. Welcome to week three. House of Cards. <laughs> you like that, don't you? She's yeah. a boss. <laughs> it's a. Uh, can you get the sound up, Joyce, for me a little bit? Or turn the music down. I'm your host, Thaddeus Massey. Bing us for doing. This is episode three. It doesn't have a title, but we're going to properly call it Peachoid, since that's what this episode was seemingly about, partially. To the left of me is... Hi, guys. My name is Emma. Hi, I'm Sophia Stanley. And I'm John Comerford. So, good episode. We get to see Frank go home, and that helps with the character, I guess, his background. Fleshing yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the way he talked about his old town. Yeah. How going up there. I thought that was a great how little he, diatribe. It, how he hated Gaffney. Yeah. Growing up there. Yeah. So, you know, see, the episode starts off with them trying to get this bill going. Yeah. And there's a a bunch of people in this room. Yeah. I guess yeah. the union. All staking out their te territory. Yeah, teachers union, everybody yeah. kind of trying to put in what they want to put in. You got Marty Spinella in there who's representing the teachers union. Yeah. And he's putting a lot of pressure on Frank, actually, to, to get this done. Plus, I guess he has a lot of, obviously, pressure from the White House to get it done in the first 100 days, to get the bill on the floor. So he gets hit with a little speed bump <laughs> while he's trying to get this bill off the ground. A 17-year-old girl from yeah. his home district dies while texting. Yeah, I, I was just wondering how often this happens, this kind of thing. Now, I, Carson. Setting aside the tragedy for a second, but just the fact the whole peach pit, or the, I'm sorry, the peach, <laughs> the peach oil and all that other stuff. Right. How much, and of course we have a character here who hates the stupid stuff and the small stuff, and the, the, not the tragedy so much, but the peach oil thing. Right. And how that's been a bane of his existence. I'm wondering how many Congress rep, uh, uh, people representing in Congress have to deal with this, go home to deal with stupid stuff like this when they've got major things to deal with. Well, I mean, I think that we don't know, really know the answer because if not for Stanford, why, why I wouldn't call him Stanford. I know his uh, name is Stamper. <laughs> Stamper. Oh, okay. um, he wouldn't have gone home. Yeah. Because in the grand scheme of it, right? Yeah. Just like, you know, piggybacking on what John said. Yeah, minus the tragedy of it, you have an education bill which is is um, has been aligned to potentially revolutionize mm -hmm. how we actually provide the most basic of services to our children, right? You know, right. children are our future, so forth and so on, right? right? So that arguably is more important than not only this tragedy, but if you break it down to the sum of its parts, she was texting and driving, which is illegal, end of story, move on. <laughs> which that's is what he wanted to do. Of, right. Yeah. That's kind of, yeah, yeah that's, that exactly is what he wanted to do. Right. So that didn't happen. Well, and fortunately, because I think that's that, again, the diff there's a big difference, and I, and I at first didn't see this until I watched the episode again. Mm -hmm. I think that a, a big um, thread throughout this episode is the difference between basically kind of one plus one equals two mm -hmm. versus one plus one equals whatever we perceive it to be. Right. So perception is extremely important. And I think that's what Samper was saying was the perception of this, if yeah. you are, you know, the 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 brunt of a joke regarding right. a petroid that looks like an anatomical part, right. if you, you know, are dragged into court regardless of the merits of the case, there will be no education bill so right. you have to think yeah. about public perception and not just whether or and not you have, to, you have to steer it not just think about it because he's saying look it's not phone calls not going to cut it you got to go down there their parents are that you got to be ahead of this thing and you got to steer it the way you need to steer it and, and if anybody knows how the media can spin things yeah <laughs> yeah well it's just frank. The first he's, he's, using, yeah, right, he's exactly. using it himself he's like yeah. well i don't want to be a victim of a weapon that i use right. myself so he definitely has to go down there what i liked about the scene with Stamper was it showed more of a dynamic between their relationship, which also aided towards the progression of the story at yeah. the same time. So 
he's still called him boss, you know. Yeah. All I don't respect. mean to interrupt all the kind of yeah. Right. But but he, he is trying to save his ass. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, you know exactly. You know this could get out of hand. It, a lot of loyalty there. And I want to something Sophia said about one of the things that she saw the theme about the one plus one. The other theme I saw I was just I don't know if it's a theme so much, but it was interesting how uh, Frank went about getting somebody on his side and how Claire went about getting somebody on her side. I thought they right. were showing these little parallel stories that are going ah. on. This is how Frank's turning the father. Right. This is how Claire's turning Jillian of the world well. You could right. see those things happening in completely different ways, like soft power and hard power kind of thing. It was kind of very interesting because Frank had no problem doing the threats, but always offering the <laughs> carrot at the end. But, but, you know, Claire, much more, you know, kind of, you know, you know uh, seductive in a sense about, how, you know, look, I know what you've been through, Jillian. I know it's, you know, this is not Google. The Google right. I'm going to try to give you what Google couldn't. I want you to have merit, uh, success on your own merits, etc. Wooing her in a different way. I thought those yeah. stories were interesting how they laid out. Well, what was really funny is that it almost seems like the people that Claire is dealing with tend to be a little more sophisticated in a certain sense. So she, and, and it's and it's a little, she's a little scarier because of how she's able to seduce. It's very. It's, it was yeah. I had a, it was very interesting. Claire, she's can so we talk about Claire's storyline? Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah know we can talk about it. Okay. Go ahead. I mean, her, she's so yeah. she's so like, is this good for me or is this not good for me? Uh, yeah. Am I walking into a trap? Or am I not walking into a trap? Yeah. Is, you know that that's how strange. you feel. And then she had the whole crazy her. lady at the graveyard, and you know, yeah. this is really fun. It really had an effect on her. But the yeah. funny thing is, I and I'm one of those people that when I watch TV, I scream at the TV. The minute <laughs> she ran into the graveyard, I go, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and I, and then all of a sudden, the old lady, and I was like, "Oh no, I'm an old lady." But no, but I yeah. thought the exact same thing. There was something that didn't seem right. It's like it was disgraceful. <laughs> it's called. It's kind of like she's so unaware of what's going yeah. on because she has this sense of power that she controls everything. And I think it was necessary. She's entitled. To the, yeah. Ex okay. Thank you. Okay. She's very entitled, even in so much as like you're jogging right. in, a in a cemetery. But you know, it's not like she now was. See, it didn't seem like she was jogging over the graves. I mean, there is a path that, that people. I mean, I agree. I'm not saying yeah. she was right in this. I'm just saying. Uh, I, I, it, the, the fact that it had such an effect on her that the next time she goes into the graveyard, she turns around and, and high tells it out. And then the next time we see her at the graveyard, she's not running. She's walking, you know, strolling through and then sees this young couple. Exactly. Who are obviously doing something way more, oh, I don't yeah. know, I guess you could say that's way more <laughs> disgraceful <laughs> than disrespectful, <laughs> thank you, than, than running through the, on a path. Right. They're actually out there amongst the graves making out. And I'm going, well, and I didn't, and, you know, she's just smiling a little bit. Right. And because I, what the hell is going on? Go ahead. I was going to say that because she's looking at them kind of um, imagining what her life could be. Yeah. Because her life is so boring and she's looking at, you know, they're doing something spontaneous and it's unpredictable. And that's why I think she has yeah. that little smirk on her face. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was thinking a lot of things like, you know, okay, here, I, you know, I'm just running my route and somebody freaking, right. you know, okay, all right, fine, I won't. But then the next time she's there, she's like, hmm, wait a minute. And she had that smile on her face. And then they were showing Meacham at home with the flowers. I'm going, was you know what are they they setting her up for something they setting her up with me what's you know and I didn't so, get so funny I thought the same thing Did but you? for a okay. different reason right, but for right, the right, same right. thing but I, what I thought and this is what actually confused me because I actually didn't see it that she was thinking that they were very spontaneous but that's mm -hmm. a great point what I thought was she was using them as her moral compass right. like they're young they're you know they have no cares in the world this is the only space that they possibly could be alone and they're doing something that's so normal and so natural right. But then that confused me at the same time because yeah. I'm thinking to myself, Cause it really, like, it wasn't really a normal, natural place to do that. Exactly. Right. So. exactly. She, it seems that she has like these parallels, like the like yeah. the last episode when she went to get coffee and she saw the, the yeah. older lady at the cash register. This is that similar kind of scene where she checks herself. Still, it's like she uses situations to to navigate uh, the decisions that she's making and how she's evaluating and making judgment calls. For me. I interpreted the scene as her being very comfortable in a place that she felt kind of like at home. Like, cause I know some, okay, just for me, because, you know, I exercise or whatever. So people that exercise and they work out, they tend to do it in the space where they feel comfortable or okay. they feel like they're in their zone to, to work out and concentrate on that if they, you have to feel a level of, of level of comfort right. when you're exercising you're not going to really be in an environment like oh we work out over here if you ever had somebody ask you yeah we work out over here come work out with us and you're kind of like mm, <laughs> nah I'm cool I'm, okay. I work out over here it's kind of like a real personal thing uh -huh. so me seeing her running in the graveyard was kind of like 
yeah, she feels really at home. That's really comfortable for her. Okay, that's interesting because I saw it. I think like Sophia, like she, like wh- how was she's it that cold you said? as ice. No, not, not cold as ice. Like, <laughs> she's going about her business. Doesn't even right. realize. She's this, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I kind of was like, what are you doing? Right? I thought it was a little strange, but you know, okay, whatever. It uh, is strange. It it's is still strange. But uh, what I find so fascinating about this character is because she doesn't have the asides like Frank has, where you get to know his mo- inner monologue and his dialogue going on. I, I still was like, I don't quite get what t- makes her tick, and I find that right. fascinating, and they give me just enough to go, okay, hey, all right, uh, uh, give me a little bit more here. So they're really stingy, and I love that because it's making me come forward and go, all right, I want to know more about this woman. You know, also, just to jump from that, just graveyard, D.C., right. they're mm-hmm. in Washington, every, Washington, everything there is, like, so black and gray and dark, and you notice when he went home, Oh yeah. Everything was to Gaffney, you mean? To Gaffney. When he went to Gaffney, everything was bright. Yeah. It was more alive. It's interesting. And it seems as know. if you know they purposefully made the set or made the well even the their design. shots. If you notice the shots that that three shot colorful. they had with uh, him and the mayor and the Meacham looking at the thing that was a what was a nice wide. Yeah. And it had, they gave more space and volume to the right. screen. To, to, you know, so it's like okay, we're not cramped in the city here with all these things around. Yeah, right. I thought that was interesting. It's yeah. so funny. I didn't notice that. I did notice the color, but for a different reason. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this is the term, but is it sepia tone when everything almost is like muted? Uh, no, that's the, the sepia is the brownish hue to it. Okay, like, that, yeah, I don't saturated. know what I don't know what the the, the term of art is, uh-huh. but when especially I think well, it that lost when its contrast, I think is what you exactly call. that. Even though there was more color when he went to Gaffney everything still seemed muted right. like okay. people other than the specific people he was dealing with i.e the only let's say the couple and more so the husband mm-hmm. um you know his nemesis um uh the mayor and maybe travis right. they're the only people who seem to have spirit to them right. everyone else seemed like they were kind of just there right. and even though their outfits had more color exactly than the juxtaposition between DC and everything's black and gray it still seemed very muted very pastel to me right. it didn't seem bright especially thinking about the south I normally think of very bright vibrant colors right. and and even though and and wait I actually just answer my own question or whatever he <laughs> said thick everything everything seemed thick had a yeah. thick, had a thick, thick hazed to haze it. to Something. it okay. yeah. yeah interesting well Frank has a new security guy. Yes. Steve is... He's gone. Gone. Oh, we're going to job somewhere. Oh, he's sick. That's right. So he's got... Edward Meacham. Meacham. you got Edward Meacham, who thinks he can tell him what to do. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so Frank, he's... Well, he's just trying to do going, his job. Right. right. He's, he's trying, trying to do his job. Frank is going to go see the parents right. at this candlelight vigil for the, the 17-year-old girl yeah, who was, who was yeah. texting her boyfriend that the giant peach looked like a... Uh, and I liked how they left it to interpretation. Yeah, there's like many <laughs> different interpretations. <laughs> of the they kept saying, yeah. like, it looks like a, yeah, yeah, it looks like a, and it, it kind of just, like, left it up to the yeah. audience to. Because then, know, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I was going, what else does it look like, huh? Yeah, it does look like, it looks like this, too. But, you know, it could also be, you know. Right, like, right. So he's going to see the parents, mm-hmm. candlelight vigil. Meacham tells him, I can't allow you to do yeah. that, sir. You know, go into the uh, crowd by himself. <laughs> this guy turns around and says, if I happen to get stabbed, shot. <laughs> Yeah. Or whatever, I will go down as a <laughs> hero. hero. Exactly. And don't think at any time you can presume to tell me what I can and cannot do. Do you understand? The only two words I want to hear from you are yes and sir. <laughs> and he said yes. I, I was half hoping that it would go, hey, I, how I was don't like, you presume to tell me how to do my job? Right. I, I, but, you know, that would have been interesting. But, you know, of course he's not going to say that because, let's face it, right. Frank's the man. I mean, do you think, do you think the parents were a little hard on him? I well, you know, they're, Orn they're was already in their ear, so he had already turned Orn, a little bit. Orn wasn't, yeah, he, he was in their ear a little bit. But at the same time, you're kind of like, this is a congressman who's in but, Washington. But, you know, the kid just died, and they, they're angry and hurt, and they're just, they're, they, and Orn has put the, okay, here are the crosshairs, mm-hmm. and he's in the in the middle of him. Go for it. Because, they, you know, you're looking for somewhere to uh, dispense that anger or to release it, and, and it just happens to be that, let's get it on I him. think in a way it has to do with the fact that he got reelected 11 times into um, into Gaffney, so maybe they just feel a little bit closer to him because he's been uh, Frank has been there for so long. Mm-hmm. So people in a small city don't really. It's more of they view people more closely. And everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Kind of thing. So maybe they feel like he should have had a more of a personal approach. Who Frank should have yeah. more of a personal approach? I thought Frank was good though. I mean, he did he did everything he's supposed to do. I, you know, he apologized. Like he said he was sorry about the law, all that kind of stuff. But and and if you notice, the wife 
the mother, you should say, was a little bit more warm and welcoming than father, which, right. you know, that made perfect sense. You right. know? I just think Daddy's it's warm. Girl Daddy's like, pissed. Yeah. Daddy, Daddy, exactly. I mean, say, get the hell be. out of it. Yeah. I just, uh, you know. And you know, know, Arn was saying, look, if he had put those guardrails in like he should have. Right. Well, actually, if he got yeah. rid of the damn Peachoy, this it never would have happened. It turned out to be Orn's under yeah. Orn's jurisdiction to get yeah, that exactly. done anyway, yeah. which came out later. Orn is, you know, but, he's you know, got no class. He's not inviting it. anybody on the porch for IC. But you got to have the dad. <laughs> that's true. But you got to have the dad be upset about it just so we can have that great scene in the in the, in the the church. Right. All right. You got to have that. Right. And then you got to have the house sequence when he, when... Not only was uh, uh, Frank talking uh, great stuff, using Bible references like crazy in the church, which is <laughs> off the cuff, and I mean, really looking funny. seemingly off the cuff, I'm sure it was all rehearsed for him. But then when he's at home with him, making sandwiches with him, and he's talking about, you know, it's basically the same thing he said w- with Blythe when he says, you know, about you know someone who wants to fall on the sword. Here he goes, our people, are, they're noble people. Their hum- humility is not only their greatest strength, it's also their greatest weakness. Right. And he just uses it against them, and boom. Right. And he's in. Do you want me to, I will go ahead. Yes. You want me to resign? I will. Just say yeah. the word, and I will. But I thought the, pe- the people would have went off at him when he was saying, I hate God, and screaming it out in the church. And I'm, like, sitting yeah. there and looking like, no one's saying anything. <laughs> no, but I think no, but because I think at lost. the end of the day, though, he is a master orator. Like he, did he, shock he, the, he did no, shock them right? Well, he did, but that was the point. Right. That is exactly yeah. how you preach. Reverse like that psychology. is exactly that kind of call and response right. because yeah. he 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 almost sucker punched them, so they were actually shocked, so they couldn't say anything. Right. Then he slipped in mm-hmm. and said, "Why?" Right? right. And he even said to them, "I know you've all done it." So he took away their ability yeah. to judge. Right? right. So basically, what he was saying, yeah. and I thought it was brilliant because yeah, basically, in essence, what he's saying is, "You can't hate me." Right. Basically, what he was saying is, you can't blame me because blame is associated with hate. And if you hate me, you're being ungodly. Right. And he had the audacity to, to say that right him. in church. Yeah. Right. So he basically gave them no choice but to forgive him because if you're all God fearing right. people as you're sitting here in church, right. you have no other thing to do other than to show love. And just because you don't understand, that's how God wants it. Right. So you're not going to understand everything yes, exactly. that I do. Right. And again, I made the reference last week to me. He stepped up again yeah, in did. that God-like role. Right. And then, just like John said, it made for the great scene in the house when he's making the sandwiches. Because when he sets, sits down, he does it again. Even the way that he reaches out for their hands to say great. Right. It's like yeah. they forgot. Like They're right. in <laughs> South Carolina. And they were just about to eat the food. He's and even the pastor, right, now. right? He reaches out to say grace. And even the way that he's he's leading the pastor. Uh-huh. He's like, the pastor told me this. The pastor goes, yes, yes, I did. No, he didn't. Right. You know what I mean? The pastor's just jumping was, on the totally, bandwagon. He was totally leading the pastor. Yeah. In, in, you know, he used the pastor as a pawn to yeah. completely... Absolutely. To turn the father. E- emotionally blackmail the <laughs> family. What I, what I really liked about his speech in church is that he oh. used his, his own father's passing to connect. Right. I, I yes. felt lost. I know what it's like to be angry with God to, as a way to connect to people who have... Because, let's face it, a lot of people who felt lost have said, why God and I hate you and all that other right. stuff. Right. Which was great, and, and I th- the, then he turns and he gives the aside of how he didn't even know his face. Like, yeah, whatever, you know. But it doesn't make for a very powerful eulogy. So, I, right. I just love that he's not above any of that. He's willing to <laughs> do any of that stuff. It's terrific. Don't you guys think this is the lowest he's gone in oh, all the scenes combined? No, he killed a dog. <laughs> in the first episode. So, I mean, you know, so using yeah. God and faith to get what he wants. I mean, this well, is, this I, is I think where I think it's brilliant. Is theoretically without without arguing religion Mm -hmm. he's right he is right so so the basis of what he said is correct as well as the fact that let's also this is why the writing on the show is brilliant she was texting and driving the peach oil is negligible it is so at the end of the day not only was she texting and driving she's texting and driving presumably to her boyfriend or whoever and Mm -hmm. she's 17 especially in south carolina talking about the fact that the peach looks like an anatomical part right so that right there is the end of the story if not for you know, sensationalization of the court system, the media, yeah, and, and so she's forth a and so on. Year old and right. So it's the fact that the parents don't want to blame their child. Right. Right. They don't want to take responsibility. And, and, and the, yeah, no one, especially right, right after it happens, you're not you're not going to do that. It's going to take time for you to understand that you can't do that. It's right. too raw. And at yeah. the end of the day, maybe the father is so mad because he felt like maybe he wasn't a good enough father. Yeah, to I teach mean, there's his all kinds of things involved with it. So. That and who wants to open that can of worms? Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. yeah, you don't even want to go there no. yeah. with that because you just want to help console them. Yeah, but and then I don't think there was anything wrong with him because, you know, the argument that he was making was actually a great argument in church. Not, a, but it's just that he was cynical about it. Right. But if you look at the, you know, the actual quality of the argument, it's like, well, you know, he's right. You know, I thought it would have been really bad 
what would have been bad? This is what I was kind of hoping that he was going to do when he broke What's the fourth that? wall in church. Yeah. He was going to say, oh, my dad was there. I always had him and blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. blah. Yeah. And the story was nothing alike. And he just made <laughs> oh. this up. That's what I thought he was going to do. And I feel like he couldn't have done that because that's his home district. Right. He grew up there. I right. thought the funny thing is I thought the same yeah. thing. I, I was that's... wondering what, but he had, he, yeah. yeah, he couldn't have lied about his father being dead and passing away at 43 because that's right. his home district. Right. Yeah, yeah, that would have been, been. The fact checkers would have been on him for that. Right. I thought that but I was like. I, I'm sure, you know, to answer your Emma's uh, query, I think there are things that he's done that are lower, and we'll probably see more that he does that will be lower than that. So. Yes, I believe that there are. I want to really quickly talk about because uh, who was it on a uh, YouTube or one of our Twitter followers for the show? What's that? Had mentioned we had talked about a couple of the uh, the symbols on the show, like the Tan flag being upside down. Yeah, I think yeah. it was Tanorama. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. And if you noticed. The the chair that he's sitting on is kind of like Abe Lincoln's chair. Yeah, the yeah, shot it's, that they took was yeah. kind of like up. It's supposed to be, I believe. And it's like the chair. That. The chair is like covered with a sheet, and the the blood on his hands is mm-hmm. like kind of like a sheet, like murder or whatever. So it's kind of like they took a chair that looks like it's covered with a white sheet and used it to make it look like Lincoln's chair mm-hmm. with the angle that they yeah. shot him, which is something I didn't really notice until she brought up. Oh, okay. The upside the, down. Yeah. Sorry, so I, I thought we had talked about that, but yeah. Yeah, we did, did we talk about the chair? I, I thought no, we did. No, I, we did no, talk no. about the fingers in the hands. And we I, did I, talk about the fingers in the hands and the, the, the flag. flag. We did talk about fingers. the chair, though. I beg your pardon. I thought yeah. we had done that. Mm-hmm. So anyway, let's jump to Peter Russo. Okay. Peter I'm Russo. Actually, Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm liking him in this scene because it seems like he's taking an effort and commitment towards his job and his relationship, too. So You talking about Peter Russo? Yes. Peter Russo. <laughs> Peter it's Russo. It's only guy, gonna hurt. This guy is out of control. So he's got his girl Christina at dinner, and and a wonderful little negotiation going on. Right. <laughs> and she gets offered. She has, she reveals to him that she's got a job offer yeah. that could potentially help and the promote her career. Yeah. Right. So, do you think that it is selfish of him to want to keep her in the office? Of yes, course it of course. is. But human beings by nature are selfish. Yeah. But she makes the decision ultimately at the end, so... Well, has she made the decision? I didn't get that she actually made the decision. She has it technically. You can see she's right. leaning towards a direction, she but she says if she decision. stays, well, it's no, because she, yeah. of her own Yeah, but I don't know choice. what decision she's made is my point. Yeah, he know. told her, I don't want you to go. Right. But I think right. at the end when she's helping him out with what he's working on on a Sunday, it shows that she's going to stay. She probably will. I just don't... I, you know, I didn't, I didn't view it that way. I can see how anybody would, though. Like, but for me, I think she wants to... Not only did she want to inform him, she wants to let him know that, hey, I'm not around just for you. I have other prospects here, so straighten up, basically, if you don't want to lose me. Mm-hmm. And I think she'll, when she realizes that kind of leverage works, I think she'll kind of use that a little bit. Hmm... What are you going to say, Sophia? Sophia? See, that's for, <laughs> for, for me, and I mean, this is, this is where I think relationships get very complex because, uh-huh. again, I think, you know, after what, they're at dinner, right? Mm-hmm. But presumably just by their attire, they sure. went to dinner directly after work, right. right? And technically, if you watch their body language, it's still as if a boss is taking his staff route to work. Mm-hmm. Right. There's no, there's no, there's no leaning forward. There's no even kind of sitting on the same side of the table. Like, it's still very business dinner-esque. Right. And Except even the way for the language. I, but even, but even that is kind of like, hey, I'm trying to get you. I mean, even that was kind right. of one up, one down kind of thing going part right. right. No, and even the way that even when she says she was like, you know, you know, I might I want him to take this job so that we can have a real relationship sure. so that we're not hiding. Look how he scans yeah, the room. Yeah, no, exactly. Right? He scans the room like who can see me as I'm about to say the next thing I'm about to say, right. which again, they're hiding. Right. You know what I mean? Real couples, you know, would just like have a conversation. He'd lean forward. He'd touch your shoulder and be like, no, sweetie, like yeah. we're in this together. And he, you could see him <laughs> thinking about, okay, what's the right thing to say here so I don't screw <laughs> this up uh, oh absolutely and then he right. says you know, the, yeah. you know it seemed very calculated but at the same time I think there's a lot of depth to his character because mm-hmm. when he's in the bathroom he was about to again use her toothbrush and I'm going to stick to the fact that I thought that that was intimate and he didn't because he was breaking away from intimacy because sure. he feels like she's going to leave him right. so she, he's no longer going to use her toothbrush so then, what so did you, he do? You, wait, I'm sorry. So you oh. viewed that as breaking away from intimacy? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Like I felt like I viewed he felt that as him as trying respect. to say, well, oh, as, as like, uh, no, yeah. I'm paying attention to you more. Right. See, I'm not going to use your oh, toothbrush. Oh, and I felt it the other way. I felt like he felt like he was being abandoned, and yeah. that's why even he had that moment where he goes into his own bag and he has to make this decision, like, what am I going to do? And in you know, you know, pouring the coke down the yeah. drain, he then has to go to her and tell her what he really feels. Right. See, as a guy, 
looking at him as a as a man, yeah. he's making a hard choice right there about wanting to be better for her. Yeah, he's trying to her. be a better man. So yeah. that's why it's like he was like whatever before with the toothbrush, and now that was like a definite sign. Like I want to keep her. He pulls the coke out of the bag. He dumps it down the drain. Yeah. These are like definite signs that I don't want her to go. I love her. She can make me a better man, kind of thing. And I think that's what he sees in her. He sees. He believes in her faith in him. Yeah. And he needs to keep nice. that in the office in order yeah. for him to to move forward. So it's selfish, but a kind of a good selfish. Because he he does love her. But I I, had, I love this point because a, a lot of people do this when they know that the 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 break may be imminent. They start to pull back. They start to lose intimacy. So I, I mean, I, I happen to believe that you know, I agreed with uh, when I was watching it. I agreed with. Uh, Daddy's assessment. That's what exactly what I was thinking. But right. this is one I've never saw coming with, and I, that could be part of it too. Right. Interesting. Interesting. I think because people well, do that. It's, it's it's funny making a prediction early, but I, I, it just is like this tug of war between him and her, him and his own vices. Yeah. And it's her gonna be, is gonna be epic. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean I can see him trying to be a better man, and then it's, you know, it, and of course because he's got Frank and Stamper over here, keep right. pushing him farther and farther to do things that aren't right. Right. It's just gonna make things worse between here and Christina. It's and, gonna be great. And for me, and I had to actually look up because when she said, "Oh, I got offer offer the deputy LG," yeah. right? Is it what she said? Mm-hmm. The deputy legislative LD. director. LD. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So I had to look it up because I just didn't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I just know it was a good job with the speakers. Exactly. <laughs> so it's the deputy legislative director. Right. So that means for the Speaker of the House, which yeah. in essence means you're writing the policy. Like, right. you're writing the policy, you're dictating the speeches, so the voice of the Speaker right. is in essence you, right. right? What I felt, especially in the whole dynamic of the scene, where on some levels he was actually so transparent, he basically was like, okay, I don't want you to leave, and she's like, I'm happy that you said that. Pardon me, this is going to be mean. I was like, wah, 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 wah. No, it, like, it really rubbed me the wrong way right. that that was her reaction. I I, I applauded her, her for... I applauded her for wanting him to be honest, but then when you bring it to the next scene, the quickness with which she basically is like, all he had to do was like get on a computer on a Sunday morning and make her coffee. And she even said she's 30 and she already knows his pattern, right? Right. And at the end of the day, what's gonna happen with this relationship? She stays and she will forever be the staffer. Mm -hmm. They will never be able to have their relationship see the light of day. And she will just continue to hold him up. And regardless of whether or not he actually commits to her, stops drinking, stops, you know, getting prostitutes and stops doing drugs, Mm -hmm. there's still a secret nature to their relationship that is not real. Right. Versus she's being offered one of the best positions possible for her age and for, like, jumping from being the staffer of, you know, Russo, who's like a no, but also a nobody in Congress. Mm -hmm. An air boy. An an F up. Exactly. Right. It kind of shows, again, the women in the show. Right. So you have Zoe, who is very much standing up for herself mm-hmm. and is basically like, I'm going to blaze my own trail regardless, right. right? You have Claire, who seems like in such an amazing position of power, but yet we saw and in the first episode how it was directly connected to her husband, mm-hmm. as well as the fact that her conversation with Jillian, it seemed more authentic and it seemed like she was actually connecting with, with her and saying, I want you to be able to do what you want to do on your own terms. But that's what she was saying to herself. Exactly. That's what I think. Exactly. She never, she, that's what she's always wanted. but uh, and, and didn't get. Yeah, and exactly. now you have a young staffer who's obviously intelligent enough to have been keeping basically this office running, mm-hmm. gets offered an amazing position, and turns it down yeah, for but, like. But, but wait a minute. Uh, the one thing that the one flaw in that logic is she's she is smart. She's obviously bright and she can do all that stuff. But she was dumb enough to get into a relationship with this guy that, uh, in the way they that they formed together at the beginning and still hasn't gotten out. So uh, and hope springs eternal. She's gonna hang with him because oh he is gonna change. Well here's the but, thing. No, it's never gonna happen. Go ahead. Do you think he would have um, drained the the cocaine or n- used the toothbrush if she wasn't in the next room? Do I think? Mm, that's a good question. Well, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> like no. if she, like her, be, like her being there makes a difference. Well, it's not like he showed her that. She, because he I got, mean, he was with the prostitute in the previous uh, yeah, but, I mean, scenes when she wasn't there. So, but, but he, it's not like he showed her that he got rid of the cocaine. So she doesn't. Even no, know I know, he but I'm saying mentally, do you think he would have thought about it? Yeah, I mean, I think for whatever reason that I think that clicked on something that oh my god, she's going to be leaving me, and because I really don't have anything in my life. I'm, right. I'm speaking for Peter Russo at the moment. Right. <laughs> it's not. I'm not projecting. <laughs> 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 so Peter, John has he, a lot going exactly, on. Exactly. He has nothing in his. He has this job. He doesn't really. He's not really engaged in it. 
uh, he's, he, there's a reason why he's drinking and, and, and snorting and doing all the other stuff he does because there's something that's not filling him up and fulfilling right. him. And now he's an errand boy for for Frank. So uh, now I'm going to lose her too? I think... I yeah, think, I'm going to try I to mean, save something out of this. I, I mean, f- for him, I think it, it shows just how weak he is yeah, he's as, weak. A, as an individual. You know, people with their professional jobs and their, you know, academia, so yeah. to speak, can be very, very intelligent and very competent and be the exact opposite when it comes yeah, to their personal, personal lives. lives. Yeah. So there just shows the dichotomy of that situation right there. It's like, well, she's allowing this to affect her business, so to speak. And if she really wants to be with a man that is worth being with to live up to his title, <laughs> she should just took the job without him or without her asking him. She, it's a, it's a, it's a step up and it's weak of him to not want her to take something. Exactly. If he loves her and he knows that she loves her, loves him already, then that's just better for them. Absolutely. For him said, to take for her, it. For her to How take can the I job. help? Exactly. But I think but I think he knows. And I yeah. think that's why his character on some levels is great. I think he knows that if she sees the light of day, yeah, she's never that gonna, she's gone. Exactly. He's never gonna get her back. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying we always want to pull people back and keep them yeah. in stasis. Uh, I don't agree with it, but that does what he's, that's what he's going to do. I mean, if it's doomed, it's doomed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but it was but doomed from the get-go. I mean, right, the way right. they got together from the get-go. Right. So that's how you know. It's like, oh. Because well. this, this to me, was their line in the sand. Right. This, this could have absolved everything. Right. Think about it. Do you know what I mean? And not again, but I mean, they brought the church into it. But again, if, if her, her taking the job and them having a proper relationship that sees the light of day, mm-hmm. now you're negating how it began. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, like, you're my proper girlfriend. I'm going to show you off in front of everyone. And, look, you have this amazing position, which you could not have gotten. Like, like that's too powerful of a position for her to have gotten simply because she's sleeping with Russo. Right. Right. Really. Exactly. Seriously. Like, obviously, she must have gotten it on her own merits. And that then makes them equal, and it makes their relationship equal, and then negates how it started. Yeah, but but, but, I don't don't see Peter ever stepping up to being equal. He loves the one up, one down. Right. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Zoe, Sophia. Let's talk about Zoe. We've gone. Well, actually, though, hold on. Before we talk about Zoe, though, you guys tell us (laughs) which way you think about Frank and especially about uh, Christina, of whether or not she should have taken the job, of whether or not, you know, following her heart is the good thing or whether or not she potentially should have followed her career. And the way that you can do that is you can go on iTunes.com and you simply type in After Buzz TV House of Cards. Again, you just go to iTunes.com. In the little search box on the upper right hand corner, you simply type in After Buzz TV House of Cards. And what you can do is you can rate, subscribe, and comment on our podcast. So you can comment on any of the previous two that we've done. But most specifically today, you can tell us which way you fall regarding Christina Russo. Claire, what was was she thinking? What was the little smile with the young lovers in the graveyard? What was that all about? That's a really good one because I really want to know because I'm still thinking about it. So again, you rate, you comment, and subscribe. And by subscribing, basically what it allows um, you to do is basically the minute our podcasts are available, you'll be alerted so that you don't have to check in all the time. But we want you to check in because we want you to comment on what we're talking about, what you're thinking, so that we can just make for a better show and hopefully find out what Claire was thinking in the graveyard. Exactly. So again, <laughs> iTunes.com, After Buzz TV, House of Cards. Rate, comment, subscribe, and as always, tell a friend. And if you guys want to call in, you guys can call in live, 424-256-1633. All right, we're talking Zoe. Back to Zoe. Zoe. Zoe Barnes. Yeah. Zoe Barnes. So, this girl. Yeah. Flirting with Frank. She's something else. She, I think she's yeah. she's getting a little too big for her britches. Well, certainly so to Tom thought that too. Hammersmith. Yeah. He yeah. laid the hammer down. Yeah, he laid the See, hammer. It's so funny. I so disagree. So you she, don't think he did? No, no. I so disagree about her getting too big for her britches. Well, but I'll explain the thing. I just think that's what, the, how, that's what I think here, that's what other people think. You're right. Here's the thing about Zoe. She's she's got the the, the fame bug. Right, it's bitten her. Kind yeah, of hard. She's, well, she's really and ambitious. We knew that. From she, the she's, she's extremely ambitious, and she's able. She's she's in a she has an opportunity to to branch out and mm-hmm. actually show off her journalistic ability. Um, but I just think that she's not keeping herself in check as far as the situation is concerned. I think I think she's going to end up something that's going to happen well, as far yeah. as the job is concerned because. Yeah, she's, she's feeling herself a little. She's got a good scoop, right but now. she's not doing due diligence because she's not. I mean, she's basically a mouthpiece right. for a, a congressman, and she's not actually doing news. She's just being his conduit. She's being a pawn. She's, and and I, I understand it because she's so ambitious, and she's getting accolades for it. But 
Go ahead, Sophia. <laughs> Go ahead, and Sophia. I, and I strongly, I, I, strong, I strongly disagree. And the reason being is, um, is it Mrs. Tilden? Yes. yes. Okay. Owner of the news, so the Herald. The owner of the paper mm. comes down specifically to the office. Correct. Mm. To not only obviously find out from Tom who her source is, which she could have done by picking up a phone, right? right? right. She wanted to see this young lady yeah, in she person, wanted to meet her, right? Sure. She wanted to meet her, and she wanted to see if she was going to give up her source. Right. By telling Zoe, you are the owner of the paper, that not did I? I didn't just like your article; I loved your article. Mm-hmm. And normally, I don't read things that go to press. That actually, in some senses, negates the fact that Zoe is simply a conduit. She still wrote the article. It right. wasn't simply that she she had a uh, had a nugget that Catherine Durant was going to get nominated before anyone else. That's right. the first part, right? That's you know a scoop. Everyone goes great job. Right. That's just one thing. The second part was the fact that you have this lady who owns a paper say it was so well written. Right. Right. Yeah, but let's you, face it. That's her friend. So the reason why she liked it, it was a glowing review of her, her friend. friend. Call, I still, what I'm saying she, is, she, she, she you're have doing your it wasn't about her friend. Exactly. I still Kevin think, Durant. though, it, it, there had to be some symbolism in the fact that, A, the owner of a paper yeah, is sure. a woman, right? right? right. You have the, di- the dynamic that when Zoe actually comes into the office, unlike other times, she didn't just rush in. Right. She like, was like, Oh, so you wanted to see me? Right. right? No, but, this she, is not, but that's how she sidled into the, the, the room when everybody was right. sitting around the table. She's done that three or four times. That's now. part of her, 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 her and, I, but I, and I think yeah. that's smart. But I think that the only thing that Zoe's done wrong is Zoe's not reading Tom correctly. So, for instance, when she realized, like, oh, my God, the owner, like, really likes me, she kind of looked at Tom for, like, approval. Like, oh, my God, isn't that great? No, 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 right. put your head down. Right. Because now, now in the standpoint that Tom tried to stand up to the owner and said, I'll think about it regarding putting on the front page. Are you kidding me, dude? He's overstepping his bounds. If the owner comes down to the paper, mm-hmm. says to you, put her, her story on the front page, which I've read myself. There is no, oh, I'll think about it. That's why she had to then well, yeah, reassert her power. On, but sure, but w- w- how do you have any editorial discretion? You're the editor of the paper, and you have to do whatever your boss, I mean, whatever your owner says. I understand it from a, from a business standpoint. Right. But then, you, basically, you're, if, if, even if you know it's not true, even if you know it's just a fluff piece and really has no journalistic value to it, and you have to put it out there because your boss, I mean, I understand why, why people would want that. But then he doesn't have any balls. He's got no editorial discretion at all. Right. And so how so, does he look at himself in the mirror? Exactly. Right. That's and how then, I about right. It. And to me, then don't even pretend. I, like don't 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 put yourself out there for the owner to basically have to look at you twice now when right. you knew that you were gonna put it on there to begin with. Right. Well, I think it was what Frank says, don't ever work at a place that you're not you're afraid to get fired from. He right. should just said, No, you know, if it's if it's warranted, I'll put it on the front page. If not, fire me. That's right. what he should have said. All right. Go ahead, Emma. I agree with Sophia because when Zoe walks in and um Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go for it. I think I think <laughs> that Tom, his name is Tom, right? Tom, mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. I think Tom should have just she should have just said, Okay, cool. Right. No, no but, problem. That's what he should have done. What about and, the, about putting it on the front yeah. paper? Yes, or, because okay, the, or said in, what the, you in said. the in the manner that in which that was done, now he's playing himself in front of his boss. Mm-hmm. It's like, really, dude? I don't know, he said you can look at it, you can think it over as much as you want and then right. put it on the front yeah. page. Yeah, exactly. Like you're playing yourself. That's stupid. Right. Like, don't put yourself in the doghouse with your boss. Sure. Secondly, if this chick, who's obviously ambitious as she is, Mm -hmm. she will step over your head. How are you going to maintain control of her? And that's why I think he had to have the the, the next scene. Right. The next he scene wouldn't, to, wasn't just right. about the interview. The right. scene was sure. the fact that he felt like he had been admonished by his boss in front of his underling. Right. He had to try and reassert some level of control. Well, right. and his argument, again, his argument wasn't false. I mean, she did become the news, and you're, ne- you're not supposed to become the news if right. you're a, a reporter. And that was a problem. And she's the story right now. Right, and I did agree with him admonishing her for that because right. it's like, Look, this isn't about Zoe Barnes and what Zoe the stories that Zoe Barnes and is getting. And they shouldn't be talking in this is about in house. That's work product. Right, exactly. So she that this is part of why you were the underling to begin with. You have to learn the etiquette and the acumen of this business and kinda of go along with it. She just really is circumventing this whole this whole this whole totem pole 
just because she wants to show how good of a writer she is, and there's more to journalism than just being a good writer. Obviously, they're take. There's, well, there's, I mean, there's, don't even know how like good a writer is. We just know that 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 uh, she Mr. likes that Tilden one piece. Like, yeah, yeah so but so I, I like the one piece about her friend. Is. But right, again, right. I think, and I, I keep saying this: the reason this show is so brilliant is because I think that they're 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 purposely juxtaposing the old school and sure. the new school, as right. well as the fact that she's being rewarded. Right. Like, part of me is like, how else is she supposed to react? Right. She w- did go from being a metro scrub to all of a sudden being called for Nightline? Right. Like, she was in an interview with Soledad O'Brien. That's a big like, deal. That's beyond a big deal, yeah. let alone for a journalist. Like, I can't even recall the last journalist right. that was on with Soledad O'Brien because, in essence, that is entertainment. Right. The, the, and, and this is where it gets tricky. Yes, I think there is a big difference between the journalistic nature of news, right? And the fact that things have to be fact-checked and that you can't make things up, Correct. right? However... In a democratic society, part of the role of the news is to entertain or else people won't listen, right? right. So if people stop listening, people will stop caring. And that's why her conversation with Soledad O'Brien was so important because basically what Soledad was saying is the manner in which the old ways of doing news is is it preventing people from hearing that's why your your readership is declining. Right. Yeah, well, but on the flip side, is being a conduit because she's not, I mean, let's face it, Frank is using her to manipulate. All right. I mean, I mean, there's he, no way around it. That's just u- what's happening. He, he is using That's her, what they've shown so he, far. He is using her to manipulate. And as far as her being on the show talking about behind the scenes and so what's she's going on in the office, and she's yeah. saying, yeah, you're right, it really ended on a kind of indifferent note. Like, yeah. it kind of like more leaning on the negative side. Like, yeah, we could do better. She's certainly kind not of speaking thing. truth and that to was power. Kind of like, Tom, I'm sure it was like, really? Yeah, that that I agree with. That I agree and, with. And that is, and that, it, everything was cool in the interview until that point at the end when she just had to go ahead and she just conceded to the fact, yeah, we could be doing better. But kind I, of thing. But I think... But I think That's kind of a slap in the face. It to, is a slap in the and, face. And basically, what Soledad O'Brien was doing was supporting all of her new movement mm-hmm. trending, trending, uh, trending ideas towards getting more readership, Twitter and shooting links and all this other stuff that has to do with social media now. Well, we're not doing that, basically. But I think Zoe was setting herself up to show that she's going to be the one to take the newspaper to the next stand and to show that she's going to be the one changing the face of the Herald. Exactly. And her right. idea... I mean, she, I, she, she, she could have... I think she could have done that still without saying how ending the ending the interview the way she did. I agree, but I think I think it shows though. It does show it's almost like we're all saying the same thing. It mm-hmm. sh- it does show her her naivete and the fact that she isn't seasoned. Right. She's just going to say it as it is because right. she isn't seasoned enough to know how to say it. However, I think that the dichotomy between her and Tom and this is why the this show is amazing. What he said mm-hmm. was Truthful, and he had a right to say it. The manner in which he said it was completely disrespectful, because even the way, <laughs> like it was, com- it was completely father and child. Like the way yeah, the end when he said yeah, no TV, yeah, grounding you great. for a month. I think <laughs> I like threw my pen at the screen. I was like, oh no, he okay. didn't. Okay, okay, like, okay. That's like you're going. He okay. grounded her. Okay, he first grounded of all, first, her. Yeah, first, he first, did. First, first of all, Absolutely. first of all, <laughs> no matter what good story she's getting, she's still a rook. Okay, she 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 is a rook. She's talented. But she still has to learn the well, way of the land. Yeah. Secondly, he is her boss. Thirdly, he is an elder. He's el- He's an elder man who's who's a middle aged guy that she needs to respect even out of the office as an older person. That's just how I feel and, about and it. She needs to respect him as that and not talk to him as if they're peers. Because even away from the job, they're not peers. They're not. They're not peers on any level. They may not be peers, but her assertion that she talked to me like an adult, she's still an adult. And if she's not, then you should have never hired her. So the difference is he can still admonish I think she's her in a to, way I think that's she's not spun the speaking to her like a child. I think she spun. I think she's. I think he, she spun that whole argument. Oh, so now it's about a woman, right? The and then his response showed that he, that's how he felt. Because if if he was actually in control and because he's an elder and because of his position at the paper, he should have then responded with maturity and not said, "Oh, you're grounded." But that's n- what your parents do when they can't figure it no, out. No, I mean, no, if you you're do, grounded. If, no, if you do things at work, then. There are consequences if you act but up at work. I agree, talk, but it's the, you, ma- it's the manner in which it was delivered. It's not that he admonished her. It's not that he prevented her from saying, because in essence, really what it comes down to, and I would have gone this route, mm-hmm. either either legally in her employment contract, she can do interviews or she can't. It's really that simple. Right. So if if that's outside of the bounds of her job, right. he needs to lay a line in the sand and say, you can't do interviews for this and this reason, or you're an at-will employee, so I'm going to fire you anyways. But by saying no TV... 
like the way he said it and kind of was like, well, do you want me to make it forever? Like for a month, forever? It's the manner in which he said it. Right. And I mean, it was great. It was great TV, but it was disrespectful. You can be a boss without being disrespectful because to me, by what he did, he in essence diminished his power. He diminished his authority. And now I have absolutely no respect for him. But I think Miss Tilden already did that by undermining his authority when she said what she said in front of uh, Zoe. They should have dismissed her from the room and then had a separate conversation like do whatever you want yeah, but the story is going to go yeah, on Sunday's front page everybody so knows. she gave her the the way the lead to True. disrespect Tom I think she started with the point. disrespect in the office then that's why he's he, talking about he grounded her for a month and he told her you no Zoe me. started yeah, with this, okay. I think I think her tone was disrespectful I think well, I, I think that yeah. started it to me that's how I felt when, well, I agree with that. And everybody. I like Zoe. I do too, I, but I, I like it. I just was, feel like in was, that particular situation. She was not smart for going on she that thing. She, she was a little out of line. Said, absolutely. And then that's when he that's when he said. Yeah, yeah, and he was no stupid for, for saying it the way he and did. I think but he was it was certainly funny. Saying, I think he, but I think, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Emotionally, he got a little out of control. Yeah. And he should have just said, look, this is what we're going to do. If you're the boss, you don't have to assume exactly. You're the boss you know. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. No TV for But then again, you know, she's she. You know, I don't. Zoe, for me, is you know as good as she may or may not be right now. She, it's true. She's written a couple of stories that have been, got some traction, but that's because it's all been fed to her because of somebody else's agenda. It's not because it's quote legit. She didn't actually do anything for that. For me, anyway, she didn't do any uh, research. It's always a hot did. topic. No, here. but <laughs> but, the cars. but what I, what I, what I also <laughs> think is. Uh, what, more on a larger point is I, I love that they're addressing this whole thing about what's news and what isn't. And, and you were even, Sophia, you were even saying about uh, entertainment being part of news. And everybody's really worried about that, wary of it, especially the old guard, because once you start entertaining, you stop. You, you stop reporting. You start, yeah, you, you, you start to cut away at right. actually what reporting is. Right. And that fourth institution starts to get demeaned and denigrated because it's no longer about truth to power. It's about how do I suck up so I can have access. Who do I sleep I, with? Exactly. Right. Just because so, I'm ambitious and I want my face on TV. Right. And that's a question they bring up when they say, should the newspaper adapt to the times that we live in? Mm-hmm. Right. That's a question that you know our viewers could answer for us as well and give us our, their feedback. Well, we've adapted. We're on Twitter, <laughs> YouTube, we're everywhere. <laughs> you can find us. <laughs> but it, it's funny, though. Oh, okay. Because on some levels, though, and, and maybe it's a funny, I definitely, I think, have my foot in, in both, like old school and new school. Mm-hmm. The, for me, the simple answer is you keep old school integrity. Yeah. But you diversify the platform. I agree. And it seems yeah. like they're even hesitant to the platforms. Right. So at the end of the day, right? Because it, it's it in Soledad O'Brien saying it number one, and to me too, the fact that the owner came to the paper, it shows that there could be some problems with the paper, right? right? So you potentially know that your industry as a whole is dying, right? right? That your individual specific viewership of your paper is dying, right? right? And you have this new this new reporter who all of a sudden has national media attention, right? right? Use her. That's I, that's what I feel. Use her, I just in the it. same way that Frank is doing. But right. you're not. What you're doing is you're basically saying, okay, go ahead and go to another paper, or more importantly, go ahead and go to another network. Right. All that does is it keeps your viewership going down, as well as the fact that you then lost this new hot reporter. Because you guys weren't willing to change with the times. Yeah, right. And again, her being news is not what news is supposed to be about. But the platforms of access, she's a, she's totally doing her job. Yeah, she That's is. what she should be doing as a journalist. Because again, with that fourth wall, things have to evolve. In the same way as a country, how we do things has to evolve. Right. The foundation has to be the same. But the way we do things has to evolve or else... There, it's just statutes that are there or laws or rules that are there, but no one's adhering to them because no one's hearing what they are. Well, we'll see what, what, what happens with Zoe. I mean, she's as ambitious as she is. As long as she has these stories and has this pipeline to Frank, she can probably help any publication. So mm-hmm. I used to see if she stays she does the Herald, whether she quits the Herald, whether yeah. she gets fired from the Herald. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So... I used to see the Herald as old school, as Sophia was talking about it. But after seeing the owner come down, I actually do see her as being new, and she wants to change the paper. But Tom is the gatekeeper, and he won't let that happen. I think so they, I think she yeah. does admire Zoe, and she does want to use her to help the paper. They need, oh, to, they need, they need to milk Zoe for all she's got. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah it was yeah, clearly yeah. Yeah. Tom let his ego and his insecurity get, I mean, I get think better I, of him. But it was certainly fun to watch yeah, that scene. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, and I still think that Tom... 
I think Tom just wants to make the paper successful in his in his own way, old school. I think he I think he really doesn't care that Zoe is a female. Honestly, I don't think that personally. I think that he just wants to get good stories. Like when she came up when they were having the meeting, mm-hmm. remember they were having the yeah. meeting what was that last week? Yeah. And she was sitting at the door and they're like, We well, see you, Zoe, and she comes in and she was like, What? Wait, you got you got what information? It was like in my office now, everybody. Janine, get in here. Like he doesn't like this yeah. is news. He wants to break it, and because that represents him as well. I think that he. I think all the other peripheral information is secondary to Tom. That's just. I think this Zoe situation has gotten out of control, starting with uh, Tilden coming down. Mm-hmm. That this is going to yeah. Spiral. I think that, that was the fuse, but the yeah. fact that she went on and started becoming the news story. I think that yeah. just. In, but it, it hurts every, anybody in old school. That's like, a, you know, you don't right. cross that line. You don't be the news story. That's like, don't oh, you want to be a reality celebrity now? What, what, what? Like, you want to pitch you, pitch you a show? Journalism and yeah. MTV or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, did we cover everything? Cover all the, cover all the, all the points of this episode? There was a lot of stuff that Not we Not really, no, but we, that's we exactly. talked about no, Frank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Well, uh, Frank. You want to wrap up with Frank? You want to yeah. wrap up with Frank? Yeah. yeah. So, Frank... He takes care of. He sets up this scholarship uh, back in South Carolina. I love. Yeah, the, let's just talk about the scene when he goes back and he's he's in their office with all his old cronies, so to speak. You know, the, he's got Travis, he's got the mayor, he's got, you know, and he's trying to get the lay. What's going on? And what, catch me up and all this. And he goes, okay, here's what we do. Ba 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 ba. And I was like, there you go. What was really funny about that scene was that it was just so country. It yeah. was like these guys were sitting. They weren't yeah. even at a table. Mm-hmm. It was just like fold-out chairs just mm-hmm. sitting, mm-hmm. kind of sitting around, like town hall, old school, you know, just, just a few guys. You know, nobody was wearing a tie. It was just like very just like low-key low, low key and very like casual. Yeah. It was just like some friends getting together, figuring out how they're going to solve And you know, they're so quick. How many damage control things has he gone through? Because he was so quick to say, okay, let's get get the billboards up, get the, put that, okay, that, okay, great, that makes a scholarship. Right. You, hey, and by the way, finding out the music, municipalities and who's in charge of the guardrail on the car, yeah, if it's country, right. county or city, I was it, just like, damn. And that's what sparked the idea for him to start the scholarship because yeah. the girl got a volleyball scholarship or whatever yep. put a volley a scholarship in her name going to the school mm-hmm. just that little that little meeting because they turned the power speed. off yeah <laughs> funny 40,000 yeah. 50,000 a month yeah. or, or a year yeah, 4,000 a month 4,000 a month so, a year. Yeah, exactly so the peachoid that looks like whatever you guys thought it might look like that's an anatomical and he, 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 he said <laughs> you know he had to do you know because negotiate teleconferencing and then also putting out this fire and I like the shot of him when he's at home and he's talking to his wife and he's I on the table, too. dining table. He's just like, oh yeah, that was yeah. that was <laughs> brilliant. Almost was like Jesus on the cross. Multitasking. <laughs> well, right, exactly being crucified right here. Let me get through this. And it's going back to Zoe, let's talk about the little text conversation they had, which is like actually a little it's so funny. Let's flirt. actually talk. Yeah. Can we go back just to Claire real quick? Sure. Just because I think sometimes we we diminish their relationship with each uh-huh. other. I thought it's telling. Like, I yeah. think that no matter what, because it's like, I, I so want to make them cold and right. not connected. Right. And obviously, it works for both of them. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, even their banter, like, oh, no, you've only been gone for 15 hours. Like, I haven't even noticed you're gone. But obviously, they're, t- they're talking. And in the middle of this negotiation, even though he tells her to hold for a second, it's still important enough that he's going to put basically the negotiation on hold mm-hmm. and tell Corey or whomever to basically stall right. so that he can talk to his wife right and exactly like i think the way that he got on the table like i i also took it like john like he was almost laying on the cross but i also took it like he was just that comfortable like even though it was on a table which is the most right. uncomfortable thing he was that relaxed right. because he's talking to his wife right. like that's where he gets that's almost like his compass and he was getting centered it's time to take a little break mm-hmm. yeah you know it's interesting because i i like that they don't they're not well, they're certainly a political couple in partnership, but they don't really seem to be somebody who are really deeply in love or affectionate or in any way. But I kind of like that because it's like, no, they, they, they're together for different reasons they're for, for than, than a, quote, normal couple would be. Together. Right, right. So I just find that fascinating. So how about Zoe in this text conversation with her flirting? Yeah, but, 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 but like you know, Frank even says, oh, yeah, it says Zoe from, you know, he, he has... No problem. She's, telling I'm you. talking to my wife. Exactly. I but she has too. no problem saying, "Do you want to go and talk to her and finish up what yeah. you, you need to do?" So yeah. she's even comfortable with that as well. I'm not sure she is. But I'm not sure. She I'm is. not sure she is. <laughs> Something about that. her her face motion. I think yes. I think she she's, just, she's, she's comfortable, comfortable because of just what John said. Mm-hmm. They have a their they, their relationship is based on a different set of parameters, right? Mm-hmm. So she trusts that her husband is making 
decisions based on this new phase two of their game plan to get him back on track. But something about the way she goes, oh, yes, yes, yeah, I remember her. Or the way mm-hmm. she said it and the way she looked. I can't remember whether she looked to the left or the right. My female intuition was like she was irked in the same manner that she had to make the comment about her blouse right. when Zoe was there. Right. And here, here's the thing. She knows what kind of females that John likes. I mean, Frank likes. <laughs> so, not John. But Frank. <laughs> she knows what kind of females that, that right. Frank likes. So he's not like a Peter Russo who likes getting prostitutes. That doesn't turn him right. on. He likes ambitious, strong, intelligent, intelligent mm-hmm. females. That's what he's attracted to. And that's what Absolutely. Zoe is. So that is something that would be threatening mm-hmm. to, that would be not necessarily threatening, but something that would pop up on uh, Claire's radar mm-hmm. quickly. Keep she could, she could see that in a second. Yeah, sure. So this but, is, it, she's, she's flirting with him yeah. and she's trying to keep him on the hook. Yeah. She's and, but it seems so, I mean, it's, really? Did you, I, I didn't. She's, I was just, she's, I, she's, I, I she's finally, reaching. She's reaching. She's reaching, yeah, because yeah. I was going, I don't think you know Frank. I don't think really that's the thing that's going to do it for him. So I think you're going to have to try out, more. She's trying to figure out yeah, how absolutely. to work him. Yeah. Because she wants to keep getting better information like, yeah. beyond just when sure. he wants to feed it to her. Yeah. Okay. She wants to be able yeah, to. Yeah, I love that she said you got to feed me. Right. She's, feed yeah. me. she's like, what's next on the plate? Right. Yeah. yeah. Feed me. See, and I, I so took it so differently. Like, I didn't think that they were. I didn't think they were flirting with the intention to have sex. Right, I mean, I have that, to just break it down that like. No, no, not that. Crack. But the whole thing that she, she says, you, you, uh, he says, I couldn't even imagine. She says, I bet you can. I bet you have. That was the one where yes. I was like, okay, that crossed the line. She, you have yes, imagined she's, me. She's uh, planting I know you've it. Thought and, and, and I think, but I think even she knew she crossed the line with that because yeah. I can't remember whatever her next statement was. But her next statement was she kind of pulled back off that. Like right. even she knew she goes, "Oh crap!" Like I may have right. overstepped. That's but what I, I mean. Still, That's the point. But she's testing him out. But she's I still, I still think that the 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 genesis of it is is that like they're both attracted to one another, but not in the way that we think. Right? You you're attracted by various things, right? So sometimes you're attracted to intelligence, and again, not with the intention of doing something about it, but that you're intrigued. Right. She is completely intrigued by him. How could you not? Everyone is. Yeah. Everyone buzzes around him right. like he is the most important person, right? right? So that to me is normal. So nothing about how she is acting is abnormal because it's just attraction. And I think that the the nature of her text is just um, symbolic of her youth. Does it make sense? Mm-hmm. So people, I think, when they're attracted to things, regardless of whether or not the attraction is sexually based, mm-hmm. she's so young that that's the only way she knows how to communicate it, mm-hmm. right? right? Frank's response is, again, it's a little bit more wordplay, just like you said. Right. Presumably, he's also att- attracted to strength and intelligence, so that kind of witty banter, that's actually why he plays with her. So I think it's more on that level rather than kind of a sexual yeah, I don't, flirting I don't. via text. Yeah. I, I think it was, it was a it lot was, more banter It to felt me. like her clumsy attempt to be yeah, exactly. flirtatious and like kind of like the clumsiness in, She's the, trying to in, feel the, like in the backseat of a car, that right. kind of clumsiness. And it's not something that, hey, look, I've done that, you know, Frank just not interested in that. She's I, just trying to feel him out, really. Yeah, I think that's, that's what, what it was, too. She's trying to do. She's yeah. trying to learn him. But as I think individual. she's much more interested in Frank for what he can do for her career. I don't, right. I don't, I, I think yeah. that's what, you know, that's why this whole, you know, she, when am I going to see you next? When am I, gonna, I don't think she has any interest in him in any other phase, in, for any other reason. That, well, I don't think she you, cares so much about him, even if he's just exactly. intelligent. Like it, but it's not, it's not just the, 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 the information. She's learning the game mm-hmm. in general like when he told her to close her eyes yeah and he gave her that whole speech guided imagery about, <laughs> right and he gave her that whole speech about you know whose voice what do you what, what do you hear mm-hmm. what do you see so you never want to be away so he's teaching you know you don't want to be in a job that you mentioned earlier what was right. it right you what don't want to be in a job that you wouldn't get fired you wouldn't get fired it, exactly so he's teaching her things that she is like taking mental notes mm-hmm. and those things are going to help propel her in her career beyond just giving her the information and she's recognized that and she doesn't want to let that go and that's why she's reaching to get more of him because those are the little intangibles that are going to help propel her further in her career she's after this is over she's going to be able to get more stories because i think i, I believe she's a good journalist on her own without mm-hmm. just getting information from frank but there are little intangibles that are teach her about how to work a situation and work a game is what she's going to get from him overall as far as her career is concerned. And, and I feel. think that 
even though I think that everything that Frank does is calculated, mm -hmm. so you can't take it at face value, I think he, he is intrigued by her. Because I think that when he says, you know, treading water is like drowning to people like you and me, yeah. he puts them in the same camp. And right. I think that even, you know, when he saw her on, on television, like I think he is impressed by her. Like even he's kind of like, huh, whoa. And I, and I think that it's somewhat connected to himself. Like, mm -hmm. oh, well, look what I put into motion. But I think that it is churning a little bit quicker mm -hmm. than even he thought. Right. And I also think he, he likes the fact that, I mean, look what I can create. Yeah. But yeah. I think we'll she also, because you, you know, we're now creating and he's kind of making her into this thing. In a weird way, I think she also sees him as a father figure in her life. Um, and I don't know what, you know, how her family is, you know, what her relationship is with her parents. But she didn't need to call him for advice to see if she should go on TV because she says, I don't want your advice. I need your advice. Right. Right. So she's searching for that mentor that's beyond just getting information. I, you know, I want to talk about Claire and Jillian because we didn't really talk too much about that, but I think there's like a parallel between Claire and Jillian that's being set up and like Frank and and Zoe. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's going to go, that's part of a prediction going into how the season is going to play out. I just feel like Jillian is a smart Stanford graduate, valedictorian, and she made certain comments when she had the meeting about being commissioned, Adam, Adam Galloway being commissioned, who's obviously a big time photographer. And, you know, she feels it strange that Claire could commission these pictures to be done when she could, she's struggling to get bus fare for her volunteers to come mm -hmm. and work with her. So I think she feels that a non a nonprofit should be more Nonprofit, <laughs> right? And and this nonprofit looks like a Fortune 500 company right. in her in her eyes, and that's why she turned down the Google job, which mm -hmm. is what her hesitation is. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how that situation plays out. Go but ahead. did any of you guys catch how she uh, how Clarice talks talks about Adam Galloway, and the stare she has looking kind of like to the side? It was like something about a relationship, a connection she had with Adam, and I think she was just trying to cover it up by. Hmm saying that the money was donated. I, I didn't, I didn't catch that. that. I mean, that's, wow. that's I'm going to watch okay. again. I didn't catch that. Okay. She kind of, like, admires him, even when, when she's looking at the photos. I'm no? going to watch again. I'm and gonna she watch doesn't again. like a lot of things, which is true, because yes, she's cold as ass. But again, <laughs> but the funny thing is, though, just really quick, but again, it's because what she was able to facilitate. Mm -hmm. right. I think she's, just like Frank, she's a wheeler and, and dealer. Yeah. So at the end of the day, she was able to, a woman who has a gallery, which she, Nikki you know, Hambler. thank you, mm -hmm. That's a position of power, mm -hmm. right? And then you have this photographer who is in a position of power because he's very wanted. Right. He was able to connect them together and then get money for her her nonprofit. Right. So now you have two people that owe her. Right. Even though they gave her money, that's not how they're going to see it. Right. He's going to basically be like, oh, my God, this woman now I'm being represented. Represented. The agent is now basically like, I got this this great photographer. And she said and now Nikki donates, what, 40000 yeah. 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 Is it a month? A year. A year, a year yeah. to their organization yeah. just because she facilitated yeah some yeah. kind of you know mm -hmm. is she introduction did, did she also mention that she fired half her staff for her to yeah make, to that yes. that's actually the only yeah. thing that i actually thought she that Whether was she that, did or she didn't that's what she said right. but i actually think she overplayed her hand there that's i think when she was going to lose her mm -hmm. oh, oh if she had done her research properly a woman like that would never want to to think that yeah. she cost people jobs yeah. that there are now people who possibly can't pay their rent or their mortgage or send their kids to school for her yeah. That's not that's not yeah, that's the not genesis Jillian, of who she is, yeah. and I think that's where Claire overplayed she, her hand, well, and that's why Claire had to go back, oh, yeah. specifically yeah. to her apartment. And Claire realized Claire had to speak to her in her own home. Mm -hmm. The office it was turf, too much on her office, turf yeah. in her in where she felt comfortable and still vulnerable. But Claire, yeah, Claire's a master strategist. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, she almost the, overplayed her hand. Mm -hmm. Claire's going after Jillian, much like in in in, in well, shall we say, uh, wooing. Her to a right. just in the same way that Frank is with Zoe. Mm -hmm. So we see these. Th this is how they're going to bring these uh, proteges into their. Right. And I thought that I find it fascinating, not only because here you got Zoe, who's way more ambitious in on, in, in a certain respect than Jillian is. Jillian's obviously ambitious, but she has way more discipline and uh, I, I don't know, lack of a better term, integrity about how she goes about doing it. She, right. You know, she wants to. I, I think Zoe's much more ambitious and more, more worried about that than she is about integrity, even though she says that thing about Tilden. 
uh, about whether or not she wants her integrity or not. But anyway. I think, go ahead, go ahead. I just like those parallels, and we get to see, again, those, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, we have the parallels between how Frank handles it mm-hmm. and how Claire handles it. Now we also get to see the parallels between how Zoe is and how who Jillian is. And right. We get to see those things play out. It, it seems that there was a, there was a, some symbolism in the, uh, the, the difference between Claire and Jillian. You know, Claire, she's savvy, sophisticated, a little older. Everything about her is a little dark. Jillian, she's pregnant. She represents purity. And she's not pregnant. Yeah. pregnant. What? She's not pregnant. I didn't get that. Wow. Didn't she say she was pregnant? No. No. I don't, I don't remember no. that. No. She was sick. She's sick. She had she's malaria She's sick and she's point. been sick three times. She's not pregnant. She wasn't pregnant? No. no. Okay, I thought she was pregnant. No, I think it was no, because sick. she was throwing up. I took it out. She was pregnant as well. Oh. I think she was covering up. I just took it as being sick because she was coughing like crazy, and that you know she said. Oh yeah, I didn't talked about her going all. to a doctor. That's so funny. And yeah. Being ill and, and she's been sick three times. And to me, she looks like emaciated. Like she does look emaciated. You know what I mean? And it makes sense given the work that she does, and yeah. it shows that like she probably like doesn't eat because she's always working and she doesn't have money, and she doesn't have health insurance or whatever. That's okay. how I took it. Oh. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So do you want to do the news and gossip? <laughs> TV news. <laughs> news and gossip. So. I mean, you're the one who called it. Uh, no, sorry. It. <laughs> we know each other too well. Um, the only thing, it's not necessarily news and gossip, but I, I, I love the fact that they bring in real world um, journalists. Mm-hmm. So, um, oh, you know, Stephanopoulos yeah. was on last week. Uh, Soledad O'Brien was on this week. And even Tom made a reference to Judy Miller. And I should yeah. have known the minute she, they made the reference. Mm-hmm. I should have known who she was. Right. I yeah. didn't. Right. <laughs> Um, when I looked it up, I then did. It just right. didn't. It didn't jump out at me. And I think that while looking her up, not only realizing that she obviously is is you know one of the the most um, I guess could say well regarded journalists, but more importantly yeah. female journalists. I think it's not coincidental that she most recently was involved with that whole CIA leak. Yeah. Right. Right. So again. Yeah. I think they they deliberately mention it yeah. because on one level you can say she she represents integrity and the old school way of doing things, right? Right. But yet at the end of her career, yeah. arguably it was tarnished. Why? Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that 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 was set on purpose, and I think because she again, lost her integrity and went for the box. Mm, maybe that kind of plays into prediction. Yeah. I don't do predictions on the show. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're on the TV. We should probably come up with some something better than right? predictions because I'm we'll, telling we'll you, come up with something. Yeah, because no yeah. one is gonna believe us anyway. Oh, you saw it. You know. Yeah. Good. I mean, if you yeah, haven't, you haven't. So what do you got? I mean, you should give a prediction. It okay. If you haven't predicted, they will believe that you didn't watch. Yeah. Well, yeah, I haven't. So whether they believe it or not, yeah. a, that's a, a open to interpretation. That's fine with me. But uh, my prediction is that I, I think Corey is gonna try to go. Sorry, Coy. Peter, Peter Russo, Peter, played by Corey yeah. Stoll. Mm-hmm. He's going to try to be the better man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's going to fail miserably. <laughs> the, and I think he's going to try, you know, because of Frank having him, making him be more of an errand boy. And it's going to cause huge friction. And at some point, she's, she better leave. But uh, I just, again, I, that goes to one of the predictions I said that the first episode we had, which is that Corey's going to get, sorry, Peter's going to get squeezed like crazy from Frank. Right. So. Okay. Episode four. I have a, this is actually like a tiny one, not even probably pertinent to the story, but for me, the new security guard, when he yeah. opened the door, mm-hmm. something about it initially didn't feel right to me until he went inside and I go, oh, okay, obviously he's been in security before, so it's not like it's the first time he's met Frank and that's normal, right. but still, something yeah. didn't sit right with me. I had it, the same feeling. It didn't sit and right I, with me. I'm telling you, I, I thought they yeah. setting up an affair. Exactly. Or that it's Claire. already existed. Something, because even the way, because I, I don't know, and this is being very stereotypical mm-hmm. of, of me, so this is a generalization just for the sake of, of character is how they're written on the page. He's a security guard, a very stiff guy. The way that he put the flowers, you know, in the vase, and then, and then at the it. end he tilted them just so, and the yeah. way that it was lit, it was a little bit too beautiful for me. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? No, but it, in yeah, the same point that it was from a sense of caring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it wasn't that. caring because he wanted it to be perfect for Frank. No. It was, I, I it, it didn't sit right with me. It, it didn't sit but right it, with me. But, you know, clearly Frank didn't know him, so, I mean, who right. knows? But, no, but, but who I knows think, but right. He and Claire already know each other from a different time, Exactly, too. and I couldn't remember, because when I was watching it, I couldn't remember if Frank didn't know him or Frank just didn't remember his name. Like, he was like, Wait, who are you again? 
Meaning, like, I've had oh. several people, and I couldn't remember. Right. I have to go right. back right. and watch it but again. He said, but, but the way he talked to him at, down south in Gaffney, clearly he didn't rem- he didn't know. Right. Him. So right. he doesn't he know. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that he and Claire don't know each other. Uh, Meacham, I should say. Meacham, Meacham and Claire, Claire yeah. may not know. They may know each other. And maybe the reason why Steve is no longer working uh, for Frank is because Meacham manipulated it or, 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 or something so that he could. I don't know. It, but but I swear, I had the feeling, oh, they're setting that up. They're, having, yeah. they're going to have an affair. Mm-hmm. Because we'll, we'll she doesn't see. really have a, lo- it doesn't seem like a love relationship between she and Frank. So there's going to be something else for her. Emma, what's your prediction? Um, I don't have any, but I'm gonna uh, go back to the cemetery and just say that I took it as uh, that Claire is getting older and it, the clock is ticking for her. Interesting. To have kids and okay. to build a, f- a real family, hmm. and I think seeing the couple and how intimate they were reminds her or kind of like I think that's why she had the smirk Reminded on her, her face her youth or something. and you know just what she's a missing. family that's what I mean Reminding her what, what she's, she's given up and yes she doesn't have it in her life which is why I thought they were setting up the affairs like I don't have that and the life. tulips at the end yeah because and, yeah. I think flowers mean life so the cemetery means death okay. but I think the flowers were kind of like okay what's gonna happen in the next episode all right. With between her and Frank. Yeah, she is the one that planted. Remember they told yeah. they told her the yeah, story. Yeah, it's great. She's she the one that never, planted the right. last she time. She never gotten her hands dirty. Never got that earthworms and all. That, she that was, was in there. That was the metaphor. Time, yeah, it, it was. She doesn't so, like to get her hands dirty. She doesn't like to get her hands dirty, but she is dirty. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> until next time, after buzzers, I'm your host, Thaddeus Massey. Where can we find you guys? Uh here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter at Sophia Stanley. You can find me on Twitter at I am Emma K and on Instagram Emma. Uh, underscore three times K. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Club Thaddeus. You can find me here on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock for CBS in Vegas and the season finale of NBC's Deception this coming Tuesday Ooh, at 6 nice. p.m. Good plug. Till next time after buzzers. See you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.